right, let's dive into the different types of hormones. We've got synthetic hormones, we've got bioidentical hormones and compounded hormones. So we're going to get into the differences between these hormones because when you start on hormone replacement therapy, obviously you want to be taking the right type of hormone that's going to most benefit your body because we're taking these hormones not just for the symptom relief, and they absolutely will do this. They will relieve symptoms when we start to take them in perimenopause and even symptoms that occur in menopause as well. Um, so very good for symptom relief. But remember, we want to be on hormones for their health supportive benefits, right? They're brain, the brain protection we get, the breast protection we get, the bone protection we get, the gut support we get. These hormones support our gut health and so much more. So we want to make sure we're choosing the right type of hormone. So let's get into it. First of all, we have synthetic hormones. So we're going to be talking about synthetic hormones versus bioidentical hormones and then compounded. What are compounded hormones and when would you want to use them? So synthetic hormones are hormones that have a similar molecular structure to the hormones that we make in our body. Hormones that we make in our body are called endogenous. So our own endogenous production of hormones and the hormones that we put on from outside of the body are called exogenous. And so synthetic hormones have a similar molecular structure to our endogenous hormones, but they are not identical in structure. And because they're not identical, our body has to process them. They have to be processed and metabolized. There have to be some steps that um, are put in place that necessitate the processing of these hormones in the body to make them into a usable form. Now, these synthetic hormones, they're also crafted from man-made chemicals, and they also contain what we call excipients, or you could call them additives. Things like dyes, uh, oils, um, things like sugars and colors and other kinds of toxins. And they are put in these synthetic hormones as additives, as excipients, um, fillers that are used in the product. Now, these synthetic hormones are FDA. If you're in the States, most of the ladies who I work with inside my programs are from the US, but we work with women all around the globe. So Canada, US, UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. But in I'm just going to, for ease, um, I'll tell you that these synthetic hormones are FDA approved. Most people know what the FDA is. They're also TGA approved, and that is the Australian version of the FDA. And so they're, you know, same goes probably for the other places of the world where we work with women, right? But the synthetic hormones, FDA approved, TGA approved, right? They've got that magical tick. <laughs> and a couple of examples of synthetic hormones that you may not realize are synthetic hormones include the birth control pill and also the Mirena IUD. And so these, the birth control pill, the Mirena IUD, they contain the synthetic estrogen or progestins. And I'm going to go into progestins in particular, because those in particular are problematic when you don't take them in a bioidentical format. Progestins are synthetic progesterone. They are not, this is very important because even it gets mixed up in the research. Progestin stands for synthetic and then quote progesterone. It is not a progesterone. So that Mirena that your doctor is telling you to use in perimenopause to reduce your heavy bleeding or your migraines uh, or for your, because you've got some symptoms of quote, estrogen dominance, like fibroids, whatever the case may be, your doctor's recommending a synthetic progestin in a Mirena or a synthetic progestin in a birth control pill format. And this is not progesterone at all. It does, it can do opposite things in the body to the bioidentical progesterone. And then anytime we take an oral estrogen, that can be problematic because it raises clotting factors. We never like to take an oral estrogen. And that includes things like the pill. 
Okay, so that's what synthetic hormones are. We don't love them personally. I would never recommend them and I would never go near them. Bioidentical. So bioidentical hormones are exactly what they sound like. They are exactly identical to the molecular structure of the hormones, those endogenous hormones that we make in our body. So they are the the same in structure, right? And because they're the same in structure, they don't need to go under any uh, conversions, any uh, like the synthetic hormones do, any conversion so that they can be utilized in the body. The body recognizes them. They seamlessly fit into our hormone receptors. Just a, a, a brief refresher. We've got these hormone receptors. They're like catches mitts on a cell and they catch the hormone, and then they throw it on so that these hormones can deliver their messages within the body. And we must make sure that these hormone receptors are functioning optimally because if they're not, our hormones, whether they're endogenous, right, the hormones we make on our own, or exogenous, the hormones we bring in, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, these hormones will only work as well as our hormone receptors work. And this is why Hormone replacement therapy is important, but it's not a magic solution because if your hormone receptors are gunked up with toxins, which is very common in this modern day world where we are surrounded and we're bathing in a chemical cocktail every single day, even if we live a low tox lifestyle, right? So these these receptors, we need to make sure we're doing daily detox, sorry, daily detoxes. We need to make sure that we're doing things to support our liver, our kidneys, our gut, right? We need to make sure we're going to the bathroom every day. So many people are constipated, so many. And what troubles me is that a lot of people are constipated, but they don't think it's as big of a problem as it is. It's far bigger of a problem than many people realize. It's a big, big concern. You cannot be constipated. So maybe you need to work on your gut health, right, to support that constipation. But my point is we have to support our organs of detoxification and we need to support them every single day, which means doing daily detoxes, which means working on gut health. But the other things that support detox, which then in turn supports keeping these receptors nice and clear and functioning optimally, are nutrients. So nutrients come along and they make our biochemical pathways tick in the body. I often explain this when I'm talking about, for example, the Dutch hormone test and people are thinking they need it to see phase one and phase two. And I say, well, what's the point? Because if your phase one and phase two aren't working well, you need to go and work on your gut and your nutrients because that's what makes them work well, right? So nutrients come on in and they make those biochemical pathways tick. So without nutrients, your phase one, phase two, let alone all your other detox pathways aren't going to work optimally. So you need to support nutrition by way of an HTMA. It doesn't matter how clean your diet is, you're going to have imbalances and deficiencies. So you need to support nutrition in order to support detox, in order to keep these receptors nice and clear. But also these receptors, they run due to nutrients. Certain particular nutrients make these receptors work optimally. That's why I harp on and on and on about running HTMA tests regularly, doing consistent HTMAs and getting a customized multinutrient because one over the counter isn't going to cut it. It's not going to have therapeutic levels of things that you need. It might have things in it you don't need, right? So receptor health, super duper important, but getting back to the bioidentical hormones, they seamlessly fit into these receptors because they're recognized by the body. The synthetic ones, the body goes, what the heck is this? What have you given me? Well, now I've got to do stuff with this. So you're taking precious resources away from the body. And in this day and age, we never want to have, have to do that. When really we could have brought on the bioidentical hormones and the body will go, yep, I know exactly what you are. I know exactly what to do with you. In you come to these receptors, let's utilize you, right? So already we're starting off from a much better place when we utilize bioidentical hormones versus synthetic hormones. Now, remember the synthetic are made out of man-made chemicals, whereas these bioidentical hormones are made out of plant compounds. And so estrogen is made out of soy and progesterone is made out of yams. Um, no, however, 
please be wild yams rather please be aware that wild yam cream is not the same as progesterone very important they're created differently so it's you can use wild yam cream if you'd like but it's not what i recommend i recommend women go to the real deal progesterone that's what's going to give you the bigger bang for your back buck it's going to give you better symptom relief even if you get symptom relief on wild yam i mean that's great I don't know whether it's literally working for you, whether it's placebo, who knows? Doesn't really care if it's the symptoms we're trying to get rid of, right? What I do care about, however, is whether or not you have enough of the real deal hormones on board, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, to actually protect you. So wild yam cream is never going to get your progesterone levels up enough to protect you. It protect, It's neuroprotective. It's heart protective. It's vitally important for your heart. It's bone protective and on and on. So anyway, that's what they're made from. If you're wondering, is the soy and the wild yam. Bioidentical are both FDA and TGA approved. Uh, however, this is where it starts to get a little bit different. So you've got your bioidenticals, then you've got your compounded. So we'll talk about compounded next. The bioidentical are FDA and TGA approved. The compounded hormones are not. Now, bioidentical FDA, TGA approved progesterone, for example, contains, it's called Prometrium. So anybody out there taking Prometrium, I think it's fine. Like if that's all you can get, or I know it can be a lot cheaper. Uh, you know, funnily enough, it's not actually cheaper for me to get Prometrium. It's cheaper for me to get compounded, but I'm in Australia. Most of my clients are in the States and it seems to be cheaper. And so if that's what you can get and afford, don't even worry about it. You know, that's great, but be aware that it does contain those excipients. So it does have, and it's a little different between the Australian and the American Prometrium, but both of them have dyes, titanium dioxide, and the American one has peanut oil. So just be aware, if you can get the compounded, I'd much more recommend that for you. And some vaginal estrogen creams that are bioidentical can have paraben. So then you go to a compounding pharmacist and you have so many more options, cleaner options. So these compounded hormones are bioidentical still. But the only difference is they are not TGA or FDA approved, but it doesn't matter because they're highly, highly, highly regulated. They're made by pharmacists. These pharmacists aren't out there like breaking bad, cooking up things and hoping for the best. These are highly regulated pharmacists in the industry. So it doesn't matter if they're not FDA or TGA approved. And quite frankly, the FDA has done some really dodgy things. I'm sure the TGA has as well. So that's the difference. Okay. The compounded ones are identical to the bio to, to the, they're the same. They're the bioidentical hormones, right? So they're identical in structure to your body's own hormones. But the benefit is that they are cleaner, right? So you can get the vaginal creams without the parabens. You can get the progesterone without the dyes, the titanium dioxide, the peanut oil. That's that's one of the perks. You can get your hormones in whatever delivery route you want when you use compounded, whether it's going for a cream or a gel or a capsule or whatever the case may be. They can typically do any forms, any types of delivery route. And you can also do any dosages. And this is one of the brilliant things about compounding because Prometrium, for example, only comes in 100 milligram capsules. So you have a hundred milligram capsule and you can only jump up to 200 if you want to titrate up. Maybe you want to titrate down, maybe, you know, whatever the case may be, you can't, you can't do it in 25 milligrams or 50 milligrams. It has to be done in a hundred. But if you went to a compounding pharmacist, you could ask for 25 milligram capsules if you wanted. So there are options. There's more options and they are cleaner. So what you're going to hear a lot potentially from some people in the online space, maybe from doctors, is that compounding pharmacists are not safe, that they're dangerous, that it is like we've heard before, the wild, wild west. It's not. It is not. One of my amazing mentor mentors speaks about this, um, Jill Chmielewski. She talks a lot about, um, she champions the compounding pharmacist and we should champion the compounding pharmacist. They are amazing people. My compounding pharmacist is 
awesome. He is so, I don't know, there's something about them. They are different. <laughs> That's what makes them a compounding pharmacist, I, su I suppose. So Jill actually researched uh, uh, compounding pharmacies and uh, and uh, FDA, uh, all the legalities around pharmacists. And she wrote about um, these pharmacists and researched this for her thesis. Uh, and her topic, this was her, her topic about uh, when she went through grad school. And uh, so she knows a lot about this and I've learned a lot about this from her. She's amazing. Definitely look her up. And she's talking about how there absolutely are standards. For those of you in the US, there absolutely are standards and regulations for these compounding pharmacists. Nothing to worry about. Now, in Australia, which, you know, obviously that's where I live, um, the TGA regulates the ingredients that these compounding pharmacists use and the TGA ensures that they meet safety and quality and efficacy standards. I'm sure the same can be said for the, T for the uh, FDA. So the TGA, sorry, regulates the ingredients using compounded medications to ensure they meet the safety, quality and efficacy standards. And then we have the Pharmacy Board of Australia. And this board is a professional board that oversees the practices of pharmacists, uh, including those involved in compounding. And they, and this board ensures the adherence to professional and ethical standards. Then we have state and territory health departments. And each state and territory in Australia has its own health department that further regulates pharmacies, including the compounded pharmacists. And then we have other professional standards as well. And these compounding pharmacists must follow these guidelines that are outlined by the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia and the Society of Hospital Pharmacists of Australia. There are many levels of regulation in Australia, and I am sure the same is true in America, and if you're living in Canada or you know the UK or whatnot, it would be the same. They're highly regulated, so I don't understand where this notion of, and I'm sure it comes down to money, <laughs> um, that compounded pharmacists cannot be trusted, or that these hormones are not safe or unregulated, because that's not true. Okay, so be really aware of that. Now, earlier in the episode, I was saying that I wanted to discuss the differences between synthetic progestins and bioidentical progesterone. So let's touch on that because this is actually really important. And a lot of doctors don't even know the, the differences here. And that's why they suggest things like the Mirena or, um, you know, a synthetic progestin thinking it's going to do the same as a bioidentical progesterone will in the body, but they won't. So bioidentical progesterone, it supports cardiovascular health. Like I've said, progesterone is really supportive of heart health, whereas synthetic progestins have a variety of negative cardiovascular effects. Bioidentical progesterone decreases the risk for breast cancer, whereas progestins are associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. Bioidentical progesterone reduces anxiety, whereas synthetic progestins can disturb your mood and increase anxiety. How many women have I heard from who went on the birth control pill and said they went crazy or really depressed or really anxious or made their mood symptoms worse. That's the progestin that's doing that. But on the flip side, and this is what's so annoying because then they're worried about progesterone when they get to perimenopause, they're not sure if they should go on the progesterone because they remember the bad experience they had with the pill. But what these ladies, and if this is you, you really need to understand that progesterone is completely different to progestins and what progesterone is going to do is going to support your mood it's going to eliminate pms it's going to eliminate anxiety i have ladies who have come to me with panic attacks and we've gotten rid of their panic because of progesterone bioidentical pro progesterone reduces androgenic symptoms so symptoms of high um, androgens like testosterone Whereas synthetic progestins can increase androgenic symptoms, bioidentical progesterone supports your hair growth, whereas progestins can cause hair loss. Um, and then I just want to quote from a study here. This is actually from my course, HRT Made Simple. If you want to dive deeper into hormones and find out everything that you need to know in order to advocate for yourself, 
you know, in terms of what type of hormones you might need, how to determine which hormones you need, how to titrate your dose. Do you need to do a test? If so, which tests are reliable, which are not? When should you test? When should you not test? Everything you need to know about HRT. And this is important to become educated on this because you can't rely on your doctor and it sometimes can be very tricky to find a doctor and listen in the course I give a phenomenal content library part of that in part of that library I help you figure out how to find a doctor and I give resources and links and and even links to some online telehealth places it's you know good for anybody who's in the US Australia Canada the UK or um uh, of the UK, but as whilst it's important, in my opinion, to doctor shop and to spend some time to find a doctor who understands HRT, um, it can be tricky and sometimes it's not fast. So you want to become educated because honestly, nobody's going to care about your health as much as you do. So you should always become educated, in my opinion. But this gives you what you need to know and nothing you don't need to know. It's not going into depth into the scientific literature. I give you studies. I, in fact, give you a printout that you can take to your doctor if they're not knowledgeable on HRT and you can explain to them. The whole course will actually arm you with everything you need to know, even a little script that you can use with your doctor about why you want HRT, what kind you want. And if they're not sure, you give them all the studies. Say, please read these and then let's chat further. And one of the studies uh, was about bioidentical versus synthetic hormones. And the conclusion reads this. Physiological data and clinical outcomes demonstrate that bioidentical hormones are associated with lower risks, including the risk of breast cancer and cardiovascular disease, and are more efficacious than their synthetic and animal-derived counterparts. Until evidence is found to the contrary, bioidentical hormones remain the preferred method of HRT. All right. So I hope that's a nice way to finish off. If you want to learn about my course, HRT Made Simple, you will find a link to it in the show notes. As always, you are welcome to reach out to me. You are welcome to come over on Instagram, find me there at Tarathon Health. But information about the course is in the show notes if you want to dive deeper. And that's it for this episode. And I'll be back again very soon. Bye for now. I am not a medical professional and the information provided in this podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. I do not have access to your individual medical history or circumstances, so the content discussed here should not be considered as medical advice. Before making any changes to your diet, lifestyle or considering the use of supplements, please consult with a qualified healthcare professional or your doctor to ensure it's safe and appropriate for your specific situation. Any decisions you make based on the content of this podcast are at your own discretion and risk. Thank you for tuning in.